Today we're going to learn how to superimpose handwritten text on top of another image in Adobe Photoshop. So this could be a wedding invitation, it could be a book, or it could be something as simple as a notepad. But I'll show you how to do it and make it look as real as possible. So to get us started, drag and drop the image that you're going to use into Adobe Photoshop. And I'm using this image of a blank open book like so. Press T on the keyboard to select the text tool and then draw a rough square or rectangle about the size that you want the header to be or the starting text but make sure that you stay within the contours of the lines. Now the font that I'm using is KT Handwriting 1. I downloaded this from www.defont.com and they've got a range of brilliant fonts for you to download online and if you're not sure on how to install custom fonts into Photoshop so you can use them then then check out this tutorial in the top right pow, pow, and that will show you how to install fonts but if not then just carry on with me with this tutorial which is called Scandi's Memoirs. Now we're going to play a little bit of a game today and if you know the answer to this then please leave your comment in the comment section below and if you don't know what's going on then just carry on and watch as normal. So once you're happy just click the check mark and then draw another square for the body text bearing in mind to stay between the lines again and this time I'm going to open my character preset so go to window and go to character and it just gives you a couple more options to use while using the text or type tool so this is the puzzle or the riddle that I'm going to type in and if you know what's going on leave a comment below I'm going to decrease the size of this a little bit just so it's not the same as the title so I think I'll change this to just 25 and then just hit enter like so and then just move it up just a little bit just so it blends in a little bit better with the top title so now I've got these two together it's starting to look pretty good hold control and select both of the layers together and then right click and click convert to a smart object so now you can move them both together instead of independently so press ctrl and t and now you can see that you can move them all as a smart object so just position it roughly in the middle and then I'd say I was pretty happy with that now hold ctrl on the keyboard and drag the corner pointers and middle pointers to line up with the edges of the page like this So once you've got them lined up it should look a little bit warped and start to look a little bit better but to make it really stand out then right click and click warp and move the two middle panels to line up with the curvature of the page so you can see at the moment that they're straight so I'll just bring this up a little bit and then take it down here and then follow along just getting a little bit less each time and then it really looks like it's blended in and it's going along with the curvature of the page now the next thing to do is because it looks so bold we want to blur it out a little bit so just go over to filter blur and select Gaussian or Gaussian blur whatever it is that's you want to call it I don't know have the radius to between 0.2 and I'd say about 0.6 0.4 looks pretty good to me as you can see here it's you know it's it doesn't make it stand out I, I, like every letter is the same it sort of brings it in in places and takes it out in others and makes it look a lot more natural and once you're happy just hit OK. The next thing to do is add a layer mask on top in the layers panel and because this layer mask is white you want to set your color to black or your foreground color. Select a pretty big brush by pressing B on the keyboard and using the brackets under the plus and return key to make it bigger. Select a soft soft edged brush, have the hardness at zero pretty big size and the opacity at about 20% and then just run over any smaller areas and just bits and bobs just to white it out a little bit just to change how it looks then just go into your whites select a smaller brush and then just run through it 
and make it as random as you possibly can just to make it look a bit more black and white and like different pressures have been applied applied everything's not the same pressure all the way across but that's how you superimpose handwriting onto an image in Adobe Photoshop. If you know the answer to what this is, or if you know what's going on, please leave it in the comments below. Don't be a pen tool, and please like, share, and subscribe to my channel.